I've been duped. I thought they cared. I thought Fuji had my back. When I went to buy a purchase, I bought a purchase of a teleconverter. I figured it would give me some advantage, seeing twice as far for half the price. Boy, was I wrong. I got less quality than a badger's hole at nighttime. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So I went out yesterday, perfectly sunny day with my Fuji X-T4 with the 100 to 400 and my friend's two times teleconverter. I got some footage, I did some comparisons without the converter. Before we get to all that bullshit, we have a battle, secret, hidden behind the scenes, right now. We're on the Voidy Lander, 35mm 1.2, but we're about to switch it. We have the G Master, 35mm 1.4, sent to me by Sony themselves to test. They also have the 200 to 600 on its way. You wait for that battle. So we're gonna switch to this. Voigtlander has 3D pop factor. Does the G Master? So pay attention. Am I popping off the screen? Am I in focus at all? Let us switch to a lesser quality, more expensive lens. <laughs> oh, what a loser over there. He's not in the G Master category, really. He's a he's a bottom sucker of a totem pole, guppy fish type of guy. He eats goldfish, I've seen him do it. It's disgusting. Oh, Sony G Master. Now, there's no way this competes with a Voidy Lander. Come on, it's a Voidy Lander. What are you thumbing up? You're a loser. You don't even know what you're doing. Voidy Lander, 1.2 versus the 1.4, was there a difference? Why am I wasting so much time in every episode? Everybody clicked off. But I have autofocus now. It doesn't focus breathe at all, right? Thank God. So here's the deal. I bought the Fuji 1.4 times teleconverter because I learned my lesson from the G Master. I had it with the two times. It was like, okay, it's a bit shaky, not very good. A lot of low light scenarios weren't working in my favor. So I did the right thing and got the more modest one, the 1.4 times. But my friend bought a two times and he lent that to me. So we'll test the 1.4 in another video. Today we focus on the two times. Is it worth it? I tell you, I was getting some glorious shots we're getting like much less image quality and you lose two stops of light, but you see double the amount. So I'll just play some of the shots I got. This is Fuji X-T4 100 to 400 with the two times teleconverter, which equals out to, since I'm in slow-mo, this is 240 frames per second. It's a 1.935 times crop. So with the teleconverter, we're at 15. 48 millimeters that is incredible for what you get is the footage soft as rain yeah yeah it is but it kind of gets rid of the moire in my opinion possibly because there's no detail left in the shot there's not enough resolution for the moire to ruin our lives so we got nice perch action there are you gonna fly off in majestic fashion yes you are yes you are Oh, good for you. Here I backed out a bit and I predicted which side he would flip. Oh, I got the wrong side. Yeah, I, I debated that one. I was like, he looks like he's leaning left, so I'll give him room to fly out of my shot, but he didn't. He, he took a hard right on that one. We got a little Kingfisher action, 4K 60p. I'm not sure if there was a twig in between us, which like totally ruins the image, but he was so far away, but I was surprised I could actually get him. 1500 mils it's like wow okay so you can get the shot but the shocking discovery of a lifetime is when i took off the teleconverter and just zoomed in twice on your right you're seeing the fuji with the teleconverter on your left you're seeing no teleconverter and just cropped in post two times and it's sharper without the teleconverter just zooming in on post what the hell so like, what is the purpose 
Not only did you spend hundreds of dollars, you now have a heavier setup that lost two stops of light is less sharp than just zooming in post, which takes no effort. It's just a button click, a finger click versus hours of carrying a now lopsided device that you spent hundreds of dollars on. It's a scam. It's literally the scam of the photo industry. I found one. How are you doing that? Why, what does it do? No light gets through the thing. That 1.4 time thing better be much better. Don't get me wrong here. The magic felt like it was mine that day. Like I'm getting these shots. It looked really sharp in the viewfinder. I'm like, wow, I'm getting so much closer. Like I'm getting these detail shots that I never would have got before. But now that I know that I could just zoom right in there and get that if I needed it and back out if I had to, that's a painful decision there. But the pleasant surprise is that it's pretty stable. It doesn't seem to affect the stabilization much, whereas the Sony, the two times, it was like it introduced micro jitters. I don't know if it, the connection was loose or something, but like it wasn't usable, even though the results were sharp enough. But this was a very sunny day, so it's not like we're high ISO, even though it was Tony 11. Uh, 11 Tonys standing in there, you couldn't even squeeze past one. I tried. Now maybe it's just Fuji, and their two times is just bad. Some companies, I've heard that Olympus makes a really good two times. Like it's almost unnoticeable, and it's like, wow, all this extra reach is still sharp. Wow, they really put the effort in. Whereas Fuji, they slacked off hard. And the 1.4 better not be a slacker. There's a song sparrow. He's looking at me. Not yet, but he's looking up towards God who made me, basically. So he, he oh, there he is. He's looking. Something about the Fuji colors, just that so natural and beautiful. You, you just can't replicate that. What are you going to do? I got a similar bird with my smartphone. Look at that footage. Like, what are you going to do with that? You're going to show that to people? It was so uninspiring. I was like, damn, I went out with the smartphone. I wanted to see if I could get some super slow-mo 960 frames per second, but nothing was coming close to me. I was like, this sucks. And I saw some new shit. I was like, what is that? And I'm getting the worst footage ever. I saw a huge black duck looking thing. It was a black duck, 15 feet long. And I was like, wow, good thing I only have a smartphone to capture this black duck you never see that i also saw this heron condor looking thing a gray giant and it flew off and i was like 960 frames per second and that's the footage i got you can't even see it it's so far off it wasn't in focus oh the stupid wide angle lens why can't you let me do the slow-mo with the telephoto lens you piece of shit you piece of shit the coolest shot i got 4k 60p i see this greco looking thing and then it puffs up. It just gets, it looks so majestic. Watch this. It's just like, I'm gonna get large now. Oh, <laughs> look at that. That is fantastic. They just puff right up and then shrink back down. I like it. It's a mating call. He called me, he called me and I answered. So don't get me wrong here. I'm happy with the shots I got. If I didn't do the side-by-side -side and notice that I'd get the better results just zooming in post, unless I missed focus or something, it's possible. I should have done a super controlled setting on a tripod, definitely make sure, but it looked like the peaking was on. And that's the thing, it's kind of harder to focus because the peaking doesn't show up as much when you're on the 2.5 <laughs> times teleconverter. That's what I bought. I saw a fish. He was waiting. He was swimming, but not. He was waiting for me. He was out waiting me. His brother was behind him, waiting for the go-ahead. They didn't want to move due to the kingfishers swarming, but they're safe. They're safe now. And here's a turtle in 240 frames per second. You can actually capture the lightning fast movements of the turtle. It's incredible. There's actually another turtle in the background. He's Tane, Tane Turtle. But this one in the foreground, he's doing so many interesting things that 
without the 240 frames per second, you wouldn't see it. And I'm glad I used that. This one also moved so fast, I was surprised I even caught it in the shot. I was like, oh, that's gonna be all motion blur, pretty much, but I somehow managed to stay still long enough to capture that in 240 frames per second. I tell you though, you can't go wrong with the foods, just I was hoping that there was things I could buy to enhance, but really it's the perfect setup. XT4 with the 100 to 400, you don't need any more. You really don't. The only thing I wish is it had animal eye detect in all the slow motion modes, and I would like to try that, but, and also that switch from single to manual to continuous, it's on the wrong ass side. Who could ever reach that thing with a telephoto lens? It's like, it's nowhere. You'd have to under thumb it. You can reach around with the right hand, but that should be a much better switch. Like Panasonic's is much better. It's on the back. It's a thumb switcher. This thing, when I was vlogging, it was fine. It's like, oh, just switch it right there. It's in the front. Thank you. Just move it somewhere for the X-H2 if it's in the same spot. So how's the G Master performing? I'm in a cloudy days window lighting, which is best for YouTubers. What would happen? This is bound to be a mistake. My hair light. It's subtle. Wow, that is good times. That is good times. Is the background obliterated? It better be. 35 mil. So two times teleconverter, you suck. 1.4 better be better. And buy both of them through my affiliate links after you buy a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. And thumb up the video. And subscribe and tell your grandmother to subscribe and make her buy the teleconverters. Buy her a Fuji with my affiliate links and then she'll need the converters because you can't just zoom in on posts. That's ridiculous. Thank you for the scam, Fuj. Good times. Subscribe.